All right, actually, let's, okay, we're going to do two more pieces of sound, then we'll get to Joshua. Let's do these uh, three and four. Uh, continuing with this coverage of uh, international uh, law, the Caribbean, and so on. Now, Heidi Matthews and others, also Samuel Moyne, who we did an illicit history with, have done really fantastic critiques of human rights law and human rights rhetoric generally. Uh, it's been, you know, and there's obviously also the critique of the ICC from leaders like Tabu and Becky. Uh, I've played in one illicit history with um, uh, his interview with Mike Hanna, where he talked about justice or peace. So there's very important critiques of international law and legalism is never going to establish a just, equitable, sustainable global order. Of course not. And at the same time, the dialectic that I mentioned last week and I want to follow up on is that developing countries and underdeveloped countries in the periphery can still appeal to United Nations and to international law as the only rhetorical instrument they have in sort of global bodies to try to resist, say, U.S. imperialism. So I'm going to play two clips. One is very recent. One is from uh, a UN General Assembly meeting in September 2019. They're both from Ralph, Ralph um, Gonzalez, who is the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He and Mia Motley of Barbados, as well as the Prime Minister Rally of Trinidad and Tobago, are showing an extraordinary amount of courage in resisting most specifically, U.S. aggression, which is ongoing in Venezuela. This is his address at the United Nations. We'll play this first, and then we'll get to the second clip in a moment. This is Ralph Gonzalez. Bedrock principles that undergird this organization. The rising tide of hegemonic, unilateral, interventionist interference now threatens to inundate entire nations while responsible states stand askance from their responsibilities to speak and act in defense of central charter tenets. Everywhere, north, south, east, and west, the hegemonic imperial hand is visible, and oft times the metaphoric eagle threatens to unleash war and disorder in unilateralist vainglory. What all the world peoples want is simply peace, dialogue, security, and prosperity. That's all we want. The sustained and coordinated attempts to engage in externally imposed regime change in the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela is but one egregious example of the current trend. We are witness to an illegal economic blockade, eerily similar to the one against Cuba, that we annually and overwhelmingly decry as immoral and anachronistic. We are in possession of indisputable evidence of extensive foreign interference in the sovereign affairs of the Venezuelan people and the frequent unambiguous threats of military intervention. We are complicit in an international farce where the members of the United Nations General Assembly seat one government as representatives of the people of Venezuela, while a self-described regional agency within the United Nations, the Organization of American States, seats a different ill-defined entity, a fictitious creation of foreign powers. Okay. We are mute. In so, so this is really important. And again, like Mia Motley, who called out U.S. aggression on Venezuela, incredibly brave the United Nations. And of course, he's talking about the Organization of American States. We've talked about this extensively under Almagro's leadership, which was key facilitator of the coup that removed Evo Morales in Bolivia. This is Ralph Gonzalez a couple of days ago talking about, and again, this is very significant, Venezuela's contribution to the Caribbean right now during Corona. 
One second. You have that one, David? No idea. I'm just getting the this one right here. Yep. Nineteen. It was on Telesaur English. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonzalez, has exalted the Venezuelan government for helping Caribbean countries with resources to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, despite having its own challenges. I want us to get this. Venezuela is in a very difficult economic position. Venezuela is in a political situation with threats to its independence and sovereignty where their forces in our hemisphere threatening regime change and seeking to undermine lawful authority in Venezuela. Creating the circumstances of facilitating a condition for social and political unrest. Venezuela has its own challenges with COVID-19. They have been able to acquire a certain number of the rapid tests, these kits, and also the reagents. And instead of keeping all for themselves, they are sharing with us and Dominica and Grenada and Antigua and Barbuda. I think this is wonderful. So this is uh, pandemic, this is really significant. And it's also that same South-South solidarity that we see with the extraordinary contribution of the Cuban doctors. Um, next week, we're going to talk specifically about U.S. policy and the devastation in terms of corona with regards to those policy sets in Haiti, uh, which is obviously very important to the show. But I, I, also, I did want to also introduce the leadership of Ralph Gonzalez uh, here, which I think is incredible the caribbean resistance to this level of hyper aggression you see against uh, venezuela nicaragua cuba and broader hegemonic domination across the caribbean right now so salute you just watched a michael brooks show video subscribe to get them all why wouldn't you don't be foolish click subscribe below and become a patron as well patreon.com tmbs thanks everybody